Hi everyone, I'm Dave from MOT Juice. Remember back in April when the DVSA released a notice saying that there's a new way to test the electronic park brake on a Land Rover? Now we look after quite a few Jaguar Land Rover sites as well as other dealerships and everyone went, uh, thanks, it's a bit complicated, what the bloody hell does all this mean? And I'm sure you did too. Well, thankfully, with our help from our friends at Harwood's Jaguar Land Rover in Crawley, we're going to walk you through how to test them, show you what to do so you don't get caught out by the DVSA, and hopefully not blow up a transfer box. Here's how we get on. So this is to test the park brake on electronic actuators on the calipers and the standard roller brake tester. This isn't for vehicles that have cables for the electronic park brake, even if they are electronically operated. So this, not this. You test the service brake using a decelerometer as usual. That part hasn't changed. However, now you don't use a decelerometer for the park brake. You can't use a gradient test either. I asked, they were rude, said no, we moved on. Okay, so it depends on what the features of the car are that you're testing determines how you test it. First off, we're gonna look for the process for the rotary type of gear selector that's usually on a Discovery Sport. The process is the same for vehicles with the fighter pilot type gear stick that you'll find on a full fat Range Rover or a Velar from around 2018. First off, you have to put the roller brake tester into manual mode. Don't use the automatic test program. You'll break the transfer box. Now there are lots of different roller brake testers out there and they're all different. So you need to figure out how to stick your one into manual mode first. You may need an assistant to help you run the program, but it depends on the type of machine that you have. Once you put it into manual mode, pop the rear wheels in the roller. Make sure the doors are shut and you don't have the seat belt on. With the engine running and the part brake off, put the vehicle into neutral. Run the rollers and wait three seconds. A little yellow warning light might pop up on the dash, but don't panic, it's meant to do that. You might also get an electronic part brake warning too, but don't worry, that's normal. Apply the part brake via the switch for one second and record the readings. And that's it. Then all you need to do is enter the results into the MTS system. It's a bit different, so I'll show you how to do that a bit later. So to do it on the later Land Rover vehicles with the clam style selector, it's same, same, but different. Have the rollers in the manual mode again, put the rear wheels in and chock the front wheels. Then, as before, with the engine running, keep the door shut, then apply the foot brake and press the P button and hold the foot brake and select neutral. Now this is important, don't touch the foot brake again until the test is complete. Run the rollers for three seconds and the warning lights might come up again. Again, don't panic, press the park switch and record the readings. Now it's time to enter the results of the brake test into the MTS system and it's a bit different. When you go to the MTS to enter your test results, under brakes there's a couple of options. What you want to do is on the service brake, select the decelerometer and enter the readings from your decelerometer test. Then under that in the park brake, select the roller brake tester and enter the readings from your roller brake tester test. That's it, you're sorted. So there you go, not too difficult now was it? Lastly, if anyone from the DVSA is watching this video, at the end of every special notice, it says all testers must acknowledge that they have read and understood the contents in this special notice. Now the Jaguar Land Rover notice was actually quite straightforward, but the way that it was written, it seemed to be really complicated and took us a little while to fully understand it. It would be really helpful to include more common terms or diagrams to help make things a bit clearer or maybe add a frequently asked question bit at the bottom just so we're not all second guessing ourselves all the time. That would be really helpful and really appreciated. Anyway, thanks again to Harwoods in Crawley and their amazing team for helping us to explain this notice. And we'll catch you all in the next video. Remember, we're testers, you're testers. Let's stick together.